Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Well, this video is about zebra stripes. It's a setting you can turn on in mirrorless cameras, and this is about, you know, what are they and why should you care? Uh, in short, what zebra stripes are is they're like the blinkies when you review an image. You may be familiar with this. You review an image after taking it, and in one of the display modes, the camera will blink areas that are either blown out or, you know, clipped uh, highlights, you know, clipped shadows, that kind of stuff. Well, what the zebra stripes do is it shows you that in real time, you know, before you take the photo. So as you're composing the scene, you can have this feature on and you'll see the areas of the scene that are potentially being clipped. And uh, it's not necessarily for everyone. It can be considered intrusive when you're you know, composing through the camera. As a landscape photographer, I love it. I really like having it turned on. Let me show you an example of how I use it out in the field, and then I can show you how to set it up in your camera. And if you want to turn it on, you'll know what to do. So a feature we have in new mirrorless cameras is called zebra stripes. Well, what are they? They let you see what is blown out in your scene before taking a photo. It's like the blinkies uh, when you're reviewing a photo, but you get to get that feedback right away. And Turning on this feature is really helpful. You get a scene like this where there's a lot of you know, brights and shadows and up in the cloud areas, there are some areas that appear to be clipped and the zebra stripes are showing me what's going on with that. Well, I can adjust that by using the exposure compensation, by using aperture. There are a variety of ways to basically reduce the amount of light that's coming into the camera for the exposure so that you're not blowing out highlights. Now, uh, the way I like to approach my landscape photos is I will select the aperture first. That's my main choice artistically. What depth of field do I want? And then if I need to adjust because the zebra stripes are showing me some blown out areas, I'll use the exposure compensation to dial the exposure down like a negative 0.3 or 0.7. But one other thing is you don't always need to eliminate all of the zebra stripes because our cameras have really strong sensors. They can capture a lot of information and you can recover some of that in post-processing. So I'll grab a few shots here of at nominal, at positive where I'm really blowing things out. I'll also capture one where the zebra stripes are still present, but not entirely gone. So in this scene, the upper right hand corner of the scene is still showing me zebra stripes. But when I get this back in the machine, I'll be able to recover those highlights and we should be good to go. So how do we set this up in our camera? Well, each camera is going to be a little different. But you're going to be looking for something with the name zebra in it. So it's kind of easy to stand out. Let me grab this camera here. This is the Sony a6400 and I'll show you how it's set up there. Recording, recording, okay, and then we go menu-wise. <clears throat> so somewhere in one of your menus, you're going to find something that says, you know, zebra settings or zebra stripes or zebra indicators, something with this zebra in it. And when we go in there, uh, depending on your camera, you'll have a couple of choices to just turn this display off or on, as well as the zebra level. Now I have mine set to 100 plus, I'll explain that in a minute. There are various levels that you can set, which tell the camera when to kick in the zebra stripes. I like to set my camera at 100 plus for the zebra stripes because then the camera will only show me areas that are really at risk of being clipped. Lower settings, maybe if you have a camera that has moderate dynamic range in its sensor, you could use that setting. For me, I only want to see things that are really at risk because I know when I bring these raw files back into my computer, I'll be able to recover details and shadow because the raw file is so rich. And as you saw in the field footage, I still had some zebra stripes visible, yet I still took the picture. And I want to show those to you here. So here are a few of the photos I took that day. And you can see in the EXIF data, this one here is a base exposure. This was overexposed by a stop underexposed by two thirds of the stop. If you recall from the field video, each one of these had different levels of zebra stripes. And even this very first one here, which was my nominal exposure, that showed me a couple of hints of zebra stripes. But notice the histogram. Once the raw file comes in, there is not any clipping there. And we go into the develop module, for example. All right, this looks a little bit washed out, but the data and the detail is there. I can start pulling back that highlights area and I have that information. So the zebra stripes are a useful tool. 
if you see lots across your uh, your LCD or through your viewfinder, you know you're going to need to adjust your exposure. But don't get hung up on making sure all of the zebra stripes are gone. A couple of hints here and there are okay. And in particular, places where there is important detail that you want to maintain. Those areas you don't want to be clipped. Otherwise, work with your camera, get a feel for how much a dynamic range it can handle. And when you see some zebra stripes, maybe you'll know to dial back exposure a little bit and compensate for it, but you don't have to overcompensate for it. And that's going to do it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know somehow. Comments on the video below would be great. Got questions about photography? Hit me up uh, through the comments, or if you want to keep it private, you can reach out to me through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.